able to seven of us in the country get our uh, legal residence, permanent residence to come into this country legally. It was difficult because uh, my mom and my dad, Primitivo and Alejandra Garcia, in Paz, Wisconsin, uh, we immigrated. Uh, we traveled a lot in that first year, from 63 to 64. Remember, we were in the back of a truck with other families going to do labor work. First, uh, we went from Texas to Arkansas. We did uh, labor there. From there, we went to Michigan to pick cherries, Indiana to pick tomatoes. Then uh, we got tired of being back on the truck. And uh, my dad bought a 55 Pontiac, red and white. And uh, with that Pontiac, we continued to travel, working. Uh, that was about 64 at the beginning then. Uh, we went to back to Texas, to Matamoros. From there, um, we went to New Mexico to pick onions. And uh, there we met the Villarreal family in New Mexico. Nuevo México fue cuando conocimos a la familia Villarreal. ¿Sí se acuerda la verdad, Nicolás? Cuando vivíamos allí en, uh, ¿cómo se llamaba el pueblo? Mesquite. Mesquite, New Mexico. Yeah. From there, they told us, we used to go to uh, Juarez, which was not far from there, El Paso, about an hour ago or so. I mean, an hour of distance, and we used to go to Juarez, my dad, my mom, and my brothers. We used to like their, the, the chicken that they made, roasted in Juarez, and we would go there on weekends. That was a big treat for all of the family. And uh, we used to see in El Paso, uh, they would have uh, this uh, employment offices where you would say that Man, California is the place to go. There's all kinds of money over there, you know. And, you know, it's, it's so easy and, and you know, free housing, this and that. And so we said, okay, let's go to California, but our 55 money, man, the cars were all the panzas de vibora. And bien, bien gastadas. I don't know how we did it. The Villarreal family stayed behind. I think so, keep it right for a while. And then we came, and uh, you know, it, it, was, it was very tough times because I remember my dad, Primitivo, great man, you know, rest in peace. Uh, we ran out of gas and we didn't have the money. So my dad was stopping churches along the way from Mexico to California. And then the preachers and the fathers, you know, different. Churches, they would help us out with food, you know. Nikki was like, this was the 64, she was like about three. Arnold was like four. Sergio was eight, I was nine. I don't know, we made it. So we ended up in Merced, and they told us, no, you gotta go to Del Monte Corporation. I don't know if any of you guys remember, back it used to be Del Monte. Uh, all the cakes and peaches. And so we ended up right there, uh, not in Camp 12, a little bit between, right about Tunnel, that there was a camp there where people would go. So we ended up there and they told us, yeah, you know, welcome, you know, we need a lot of people. And then that was, we, we, we got here in August 20th of 1964. Llegamos nosotros aquí a este lugar el 20 de agosto de 1964. Diana stayed behind for a couple of years. She was in Matamoros with my uncle. So we got here and uh, from there they told us, okay, there was Camp 12 and Camp 11. So we ended up in Camp 11 and the homes were like, to us it was like a palace. I mean, it was like, oh my God, you know, look at this. It was, it was awesome. So there, you know, we, Right away, it was August and September, we had to start school. And uh, 
So we, we came and right in perfect timing, we started working, picking pigs and what have you. Uh, Sergio and I and my mom and dad. I think Nikki and, and, and Arnold were a little too small, but they, they, got, they got to work a lot too. En la naranja también. Y en muchos otros lugares. A mi mamá también. So, um, after that, um, after that, um, we started school and Planada Elementary and, you know, Sergio grew up and um, it, it was, uh, it, it was beautiful, it was beautiful, it was other times, otros tiempos, muy bonitos, growing up here in these in this, uh, communities and uh, I'm going to pass the mic in a little bit to family members, I know everyone has something to say before you forget. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, I'd like, let me introduce, first of all, the family. Thank you guys from CBC that are here. Appreciate it. I want you guys to say something about Sergio. You guys have a good story. Family and any, anyone else come here. <clears throat> I want to present, first of all, uh, he's a long-time companion. Tina, if you could stand up for us. Thank you. Thank you. And Tina, my brother, put it up for a program of 25 years. And I was, the Emilio Sergio. His children from Texas are visiting. They've been, you know, even though they're far away, they came right by their dad. This difficult time, so. Juanita, if you and your family can stand, please. Thank you. Uh, Patricia, Sissy, and your family, please. Sergio's daughter. Uh, Jamie and Gio uh, would like to acknowledge them as well. And of course, um, brothers and sisters, we're going to start with them. My sister Diana, if you can stand with your family. Diana's family, please. Then uh, I'm next, Gil, my family. My wife, she's the one that prepared all these pictures. She took three days to put all these together. Yeah. Okay. She's a producer of my television show for many years, so she knows what she's doing. Uh, next is uh, my brother Arnold and his family. They can stay the time. And my sister Nikki and her family, please stand. Ray, my brother Ray, and his family, please stand. And before I pass the mic on to my brother Arnold, a uh, little memory of my brother. Uh, one that comes to mind, I have many, of course. You know, like the one where I shot him with a BB gun right here. You know, you saw him with a BB gun there. That BB gun. For us, we used to have the lemon, we used to call shooting birds and stuff. Big or should say. Uh, one time, you know, we were putting those caps of the, of the soda bottles on top of it and we would shoot them and go up. So my brother and I were having fun, taking turns one at a time. And so when it was my turn, I, I leaned it a little bit over and the cap fell off. Right there. So, you know, Sergio, he didn't want to cry, and, and you know, my mom and dad were excited. So he said, let's not say anything, because if not, they're going to take it away for sure. They told us you're going to change your like the movie. So, but he, he looked like a unicorn. <laughs> Big like that. So, right away, my mom and dad, when I saw it, it was like, so that's a, that's a memory 
that I have to go and buy. My brother, another one that, that just this one and the other one's next one. The next one is this. Surgeon was about nine or ten. We had just come, we were just, just here. And they would wake us up early in the morning. My mom, Alejandra, and my dad would be people to go to work. And at like 5.36 in the morning, we were, we were tired. We were just really young child labor. <laughs> so, uh, one day, you know, they would get us up. I, I was up all the way to the I loved to work. But Junior was a little bit later. He was a little bit more late. I remember that my mom and dad saw my mom's mother, my mom to take to work, and um, so she went and got me up, got up, got away to go to work, and then she took us. And then she told my mom and dad, he told my mom and dad, Mommy, Papi, Será muy necesario que yo vaya a trabajar. Is it really necessary that I go to work this morning? You really didn't want to go. Anyway. I'd like to start off by saying fuck cancer. That's just to start off. Six foot five uh, bus driver, 280 pounds. He was being a bully, little girl. The little girl was a little mongrel. And he was telling her, stupid, why don't you listen? Blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, exactly where did I make this up? My brother said, he was off, off the bus and through the windows. Hey, you fucking queer. <laughs> I said, hey, you fucking queer, why don't you keep being a bully with a with little girl? And he goes, oh, I don't have to do that, I'll call the cops. He just says, well, call the cops, but before they get here, I'm going to drag you out of my hair. I'm going to kick the living shit out of you unless you apologize to this little girl. And he goes, I don't have to do that. So he started walking towards the bus. And he goes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And the surgeon goes, no, no, don't apologize to me. Apologize to the little girl. And he goes, I'm sorry. And he goes, no, mean it. And he goes, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He goes, okay. He goes, you know what? I'm not going to report you because I'm not a rat. He goes, but I'm going to come and pick up my son every day until he's out of the school and I'll be watching you. And that's the Sergio Garcia that I remember. Thank you very much. At this time we're going to start. What do you think you want to say? Something about your father? And then we're just going to be passing it on. Just raise your hand. In fact, my dad has always been 
rebellious and carefree in nature. He loved to raise hell, and if he had something to say, he prepared. <laughs> there was absolutely no sugar coating it. My dad was a jokester, for sure. I remember a time many years ago, I joined a new church, a new religion, and I wanted his opinion. Without hesitation, he looked at me and said, Este pancho no te queda. <laughs> I looked at him and I was like, are you serious? He looked at me and said, well, you asked me, what the fuck did you want me to say? <laughs> and we both started cracking up. Only my dad, who was definitely one of a kind. He was a definition of a risk taker. He was passionate about his motorcycle, fast cars, and the need for speed. My dad taught me how to ride a bicycle. He taught me how to drive. And most importantly, he taught me to be a fighter. I just don't think he realized how tough I was going to be. We didn't have your typical father-daughter relationship, but what we had was understood. My dad knew how much I loved him and I knew how much he loved me and how proud he was of my accomplishments. Our views and values may have differed, but the love and respect remained the same. My dad had a generous soul and he touched many different people's hearts in so many different ways and from all different walks of life. My dad was a man who most often expressed his love through his actions. My dad and his one-of-a-kind ways will be dearly missed. He will never be forgotten, and his memories will be treasured always. Until we meet again, Dad. For us, easy. Love, Monkey. Sissy. Ray. I'm not too good of a public speaker, but, uh, what memory that I do have of him. Uh, one time when I was 12 years old, I used to hang out with him and my dad everywhere. Anywhere they went, there's a bar that yeah, we had a special place in the bar where I could sit so the cops came in, I could go out or something. But one time we were working in Madera and we got out, we were working in the field, they paid, everybody got paid off, and they went to a place in Clovis, they took me with them, we were in a green LTV, it was a pity bar. It was called a hip cover. And uh, I always used to wait for them outside and stuff, you know. And my brother Sergio came out. I always wanted to see what it looked like inside, but I was too young. So my brother Sergio came out with the owner, and he had connected with them, and they were talking. And then they called me over there, and uh, the owner told my brother Sergio, "Man, it's, it's not going to be for very long. It's just going to be for just a little bit." But but the guy opened the the, the door so that I could see inside, and all I, I remember seeing is nothing but cold with naked women. Um, I'll never forget that. I was 12 years old, and I'm gonna miss my breath. Tina, uh, express from CDC. I've only known Sergio for a short period of time. I wish it was longer. And every time he'd come to work, he'd brighten up everybody. And he just had a positive attitude. Just love her. We're good? Yes, hermana. Well, Sergio didn't hear it because he didn't come out. 
So I got home probably closer to midnight, and I thought, I'm going to go in there like nothing happened. I don't know what happened. And Sergio was sitting in the couch, and he goes, what happened? Did anything happen, Nikki? And I said, no, nothing happened. And he goes, oh, okay. He goes, you didn't hit the truck. I go, dang. So he saw it. But anyway, that was my great memory because he would never tell us no, especially when it came to, like, cars. Like, Bill stated, we didn't have a lot of money growing up. And uh, one day I, I got home from high school, and he said, sis, I got you a car. And it was a Volkswagen with black flared fenders oxidized. And the red of the Volkswagen was, was oxidized too. But, you know, at least I had a little something that I could write. $2 would get us everywhere. <laughs> right, thank you.
and all of a sudden there's some guy walking down, you know, you can tell he's, he's got problems, he's down in his luck, and he locks him up and he backs up. Hey dude, how are you how's it going? He goes, well, I'm having a bad day. Well, you want to go get drunk? <laughs> <laughs> so, in the tow truck he goes, so we go get drunk and feed the guy and then take him back. We did that a few times. Not, not just once, a few times. That old tow truck was loud upon I, know, I kind of lost words now, but uh, I missed the hell out of that guy. He changed my life in a lot of ways, and he was there for me too, whenever he needed him. And he and his family even. Like when he took me home to his mom's house. <laughs> Here I am, so mopey, and she can't speak English, you know. <laughs> he, br he brings me in and he, this is my friend, and all this stuff. But she treated me like I'm part of the family, you know, tacos and everything. And you know, I came back for uh, around Christmas just a few months later. And uh, the next thing I know, Gil's trying to give me a pair of cowboy boots that are Osprey cowboy boots. You know, he don't even know me very good. I said, man, these are some high dollar boots. But I turned them down, they didn't fit right. But you know, it was given heart. They did, they're heart of gold, the whole family, all of you. I want you to know that. I'm lost. Please tell us a story from your race, the racing days at Merced Speedway with my brother. All right, my name is Del Humbert, and uh, I met Sergio right when I got out of high school when I started racing. And uh, we'd raced for a while together, and then one night I was leading the heat race, and I look in my rearview mirror, and here comes a blue and white number 22. And we go to get in the corner, and he just laid it right in my bumper, spun me out bigger than hell. So we come back around, and I end up catching up to him, and he's giving me thumbs up. And I was like, you know, good son of a bitch, <laughs> you know. And so we get going, and I end up taking him out. And we get out of the car after the heat race. He goes, it's about time you grew some balls, you little bastard. <laughs> so the next race, we're running a semi-main event. I'm leading it, coming out of the turn four for the checkered flag, and he takes me out. After the race, my dad was so mad. Oh, my God. My dad's name was on the front of his car, too, because we kept both the cars at my dad's house. Sergio's just laughing his ass off. And my dad comes out there and tells him, you no good Mexican. I'm going to, you just need to take that name off your car. So the next week comes up, and I end up taking him out to win. <laughs> we walk back there, my dad's going, ha ha, how do you like me now, you no good son of a bitch? <laughs> Sergio was a good friend, and then, you know, every Sunday morning, no matter what happened at the racetrack, he was out there with beer, and we were ready to go at it. So, a lot of fun times with him. My name's Larry Cabrelli, for those who don't know me here. I consider myself a real good friend of Sergio's. Proud to spend the last few moments of his life with him. Here's one incident that stuck in my mind where he made me look like the biggest fool on earth. Is um, I got a letter in the mail that said that I qualified for a free phone. So I take it over to Sergio's office over there, which was the motor home next to where he lived, and shared it with him. And he says, Yeah, I just got mine. You know, and I went to Walmart and they gave me a brand new phone. I said, Oh, well, yeah. He said, Yeah. Pulled the phone out, showed it to me and everything. So uh, the next morning, bright and early, I was there at Walmart, you know, went back to the electronics department and showed this lady these papers. She goes, sorry, sir, we don't take care of stuff like that. Maybe I can call the Atwater office you know, over there and they, they might have it. I said, no, I can hear him laughing all the way from here already. <laughs> but anyway, I went back to his office and he already had a group of people there so they could all laugh at me when I walked through the door. He always referred to me as old prick all the time. And um, I think that was the last words out of his mouth. <laughs> Even though we're the same age. But um, that, that was one of the, I can tell you, you got some real good ones, but I don't think I will do that right now. <laughs> but uh, I'm just proud to know the guy. Very generous man. He's done a lot for a lot of people. And he was always there when people needed him. Um, yeah, I'm going to miss him. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, my name's, my name's Bill, and I've known Sergio for a super long time. We've been really good friends. And I just want to tell you about this one time was hauling tomatoes out of Gilroy. And uh, we're taking the two trucks up to Gilroy, we're racing. And I beat him to the top because I had to move a truck. Son of a bitch, you beat me up the hill. But you sure as hell didn't beat me down the hill again. He says, I stuck, I stuck that thing in Oakey Overdrive and I beat you to the bottom. And I go, yeah, you did. And that same purple truck you were talking about earlier, Sergio's dad helped him get it or bought it for him. I can't really remember because that was a long time ago. Yeah, the, the pickup. Anyways, we were drinking beer and we got all drunk. And we went to uh, Schaefer Bridge. This truck was brand new at the time. We went up this mountain full blast. And we came right back down the mountain on the rear bumper and just tore the bumper completely off the truck. And, uh, well, first of all, we went and filled it up at Calipac. Free gas. <laughs> if, you, if you get my drift. <laughs> Free gas. But anyways, uh, I love Sergio. I'm going to miss him. And uh, I can tell you stories that would make you hear a crawl, but thank you. Okay, um, this is, I'm Big Gina, this is Little Gina. This is uh, Sergio's Chili Bean. Um, if everybody knows her, I'm not sure how you guys do. But um, I want to say that uh, Sergio was big <laughs> to me and my kids. And um, he is the nicest guy we've ever met. He would take his shirt off his back for anybody that would be here or need help or anything. And, uh, I mean, I've had a lot of good memories and a lot of bad memories with him, but no matter what, um, he's always going to be in my, in my kids and my family's hearts. And um, he's always, like, I, I just remember, like, mostly his jokes, they were never funny to me, but I laughed because he just said some weird stuff, and, like, I would, I would just be like, it's, in my mind it's not funny, but to him it was, like, funny, and it never stopped every time he seen me, and... Uh, he, you know, he played a big part with the kids. He picked on, he picked with, he was, was with my kids a lot and he would even see, like he said, they said before, um, the kids at our, their school would be picked on and my kids would go tell him, yeah, they're being picked on. He would go and tell them, like, don't pick on the kids. And so he's really, he was really into like the kids and I just want to like thank him and let him know that he's never going to be missed. And, you know, he was a big blessing in our lives. So, thank you. Do you want to say something? No? Love you, Gina. Uh, the kitchen has just informed us that there's a lot more uh, carne asada tacos. Please, seconds, go for it. Yeah, a lot more food. I know we got some more stories. Somebody, anybody? With Sergio. More, yeah. Alejandra, my mother. Yeah. Yes. Right now, Eric. What do you remember? Later? Anita, what do you remember about Sergio? He was just an amazing brother-in-law. We were so blessed to have him in our family. Very true. Very true. Sissy? You guys knew my brother too? Any stories from Sergio? Oh, there's a lot of them, but I got it right now. <laughs> you can't say it in public, right? Sis. I think a lot of people aren't telling the stories because there's kids in here and family. But <laughs> uh, yeah. It, Everybody knew how funny he was and 
crazy and doesn't have reverse on any of his vehicles because he said he's just going to move forward, no brakes, doesn't want to stop. Uh, I love my dad so much. And And I, uh, I cherish all the time that I had with him. We would go down the road in the Harley and he would kind of lean over for me to look at how fast we were going. It was 120. So every time I come from Texas, I wanted to ride. All the time, ride, ride, ride. I got to spend time with him before he passed and I'm so grateful for that. Uh, when my kids, you know, he loved all my kids with my, with my youngest daughter that talked. He used to tell her, go over there, run to your mom and say, chinga su madre. And then, and run, run to me. And then, so he's always called her that. And yeah, she would say, no, grandpa, we're going to put chili in your mouth. And so anyways, he's just a wonderful man. Uh, I, I'm going to miss him so much. I don't know. Um, I know Sergio through my brother. They went to. Okay, yes, I know the Garcia family from the Camposito days. And I met Sergio through my brother when they were young kids. And seeing those pictures, you know, bring back a lot of good memories. And um, all the stories you say about Sergio are true. But a little bit a twist, but he was a character. But, um, yeah, I can tell you a whole bunch, but I was glad that he came into our lives. Well, the Hernandez family. And um, the last two years, I got to really know him personally. During the evenings, we used to come from work, and uh, we used to talk a lot about, you know, the good old days and stuff. But a lot of people didn't know that Sergio believed in God at the end of his time, you know. You know, he told me, but he wasn't a church goer. Neither was my brother. You know, he never, you know, but he believed in God. And he told me, when I go and see God, my dad's going to be waiting there with beer, and I'm going to hug my mom, and God will have a good, special car for me to go fast. But that's what I remember about Sergio in the last few days. And in the last few days, I remember, he was burning rubber right out of his door. That's all I can tell you about that guy. And the other thing about Sergio is that we live next door to Sergio and Tina. And everybody at my house, they go to sleep early. I'm the only one that used to stay up. And I'd be in the room and I'd be doing things because I'm in my house. But I knew once I heard the motorcycles come in, I'm like, oh shoot, I, I'm going to be late in the morning. I'm going to stay up too late because I hear every night come in. I hear a room, room, room. Oh, shoot, I'm in trouble. <laughs> um, Kike, tell us a story, please. The only stories I know is he visited him over at the racetrack all the time. That's the only time we got in contact with him. And he was almost the whole family were kind of close together. And, uh, I mean, there's so many things that I can remember as growing up with them. Um, most of the time, we'd be in the backyard building a motor, or racing, or going down the front, uh, corner to corner. And there was smoke everywhere. So that's how I remember them. Tell us about when uh, Ray was in his bike, and uh, he fell face first, all of his teeth, he broke him and he was bleeding and you and him went to the back and Sergio was there and everybody else and they thought that someone had beat him up. How did, what happened? Well, I remember that, uh, I guess it was New Year's? Yeah, it was New Year's and all I remember is uh, Ray taking off. He came back and he was all bloody and they thought they got into a fight with someone and Sergio was all pissed off. So, uh, I mean... <laughs> I just remember him 
as being himself. And there's a lot of things um, that I can't, uh, you know, he's pretty explicit about how he was. So I'll just leave it at to that. Thank you all. Well, Mike, you already told us a story, right? About the, you already told us one, about the six day road runner. But you didn't know, you never, no, no one ever told you how fast you really went on it, right? In the Fresno Street, or until today? Yeah, a little bit over 100. So, speaking to Grandpa's character, this is a story that Mom used to tell us. Um, whenever she was a teenager, because, you know, teenagers do stupid things. Um, it, I think it was after homecoming or something, to where Mom and her friends ended up in a park, and Mom got very like, uncomfortable or something, and she went and called her dad, and without hesitation, without any questions, he showed up there in an impossible amount of time, going, he went, who knows how fast, in his heart, and uh, showed up and picked her up, and no questions asked, and it was, he cared a lot about it. All this family. Thank you. A lot more food, please, and a lot of pastries. Even for some to take home, I think. <laughs> That'd be nice. And if we can get some music now, that'd be good. Thank you all for being here for my brother Sergio Garcia. May he rest in peace.